morning everyone welcome to uh, our webinar on how to safeguard your hybrid working environment in the presence of a cyber attack my name is thomas uh, i work on the solutions team here at sonology so i help with your projects or any sort of finite technical details um that's my job here to try and help you with that and help you build out a solution and to be part of the solution team um so today we're going to look at sort of what data protection challenges sort of enterprises are facing uh, and what solutions are on offer to sort of help you combat them. Let's start by looking at what sort of modern workplace trends, sort of are the forecasts that we have. Uh, more and more businesses are moving sort of hybrid or, or cloud-based. And this means that work is no longer limited to a single place, time, or even device. So there's that all access environment. Uh, and with this, sort of there's an increased demand for online collaboration platforms. So there's sort of a broader scope meaning that there's more data types and data sources. So the managerial challenges, of course, increased with that. So according to some research data, uh, the number of endpoint devices will grow exponentially with the size of the enterprise organization. Uh, it can be seen that when the scale of the organization becomes larger and larger, there'll be more and more types of information to be mastered. So as you can see here, sort of as the company grows, the, the number of devices or number of employees grows rapidly along with the endpoints. Uh, on average, we've found that using sort of the sources you can see, each person uses 36 cloud applications per day at work. And the percentage of workloads that are hosted in the cloud are as high as 41%. Therefore, we can probably predict the number of cloud applications that will continue to increase uh, and that the types of data generated will become more and more abundant, uh, meaning that there's sort of, you know, quite a broad array of IT security risks. Um, so as workspaces and data types become increasingly complex, uh, the information security risks also increase relatively. And so among the information security risks counted in 2023, uh, the top five, as you can see on screen, are malware attacks, ransomware attacks, human error, uh, cloud data leakage, and external data leakage. So there's quite a, a range there. Um, but therefore, many different data types have emerged in sort of the modern working environment, which indirectly means that enterprises will meet new IT challenges. So we'll have a little look at those. Uh, the first challenge, we have to effectively manage the explosive growth of data sources and the types of data, uh, how to maximize the value of sort of multi-dent data resources you have and improve sort of data center control. Um, over that data. So maximizing the value of, you know, multi-data resources and improving that control. So we propose three modern information security protection guidelines, which are active backup for business, C2 backup for business, and C2 object storage. Uh, these are here to meet sort of the information security protection required by enterprises in the modern environment. And with this, we provide both on-prem and off-site backup solutions, active backup for business and C2 backup for business uh, can not only help your business backup various data easily, but also meet your different needs for backup. So let's have a quick look at what's on the agenda for today. We'll start off with regulation and compliance. So understanding what regulations are in place and the tools that we can provide you to help comply with them. Then we'll cover off data protection. So understand what backup solutions are available um, that we uh, can easily manage and deploy at a large scale. And then finally, we'll look at disaster recovery uh, and see how quick to quickly restore data and services when ransomware strikes. So we're going to start with regulation and compliance. So the National Institute of Standards and Technology and its subsidiary, the National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence, proposed in a report that backup files and other data of endpoint devices need to be protected offline, and the update cycle should be confirmed. As to meet the recovery point objective, which is the maximum length of time permitted that data can be restored from, and the recovery time objective, which is the targeted duration of time between the event of failure and the point where operation resumes. So in addition to this, the organization should also follow the 321 backup principle. So the solution being active backup for business, it doesn't require any license fees. 
Um, it supports multi versions of endpoints, servers, and virtual machines, unlimited number of backup tasks, a web based recovery portal, and it can all help um, enterprises get rid of duplicated blocks. So there's global deduplication, which will help reduce the amount of data that needs to be backed up, which we'll cover a little bit more in detail later. So looking at the pricing compared with other common backup software on the market, Synology's Active Backup for Business does not require licensing or subscription fees, as we mentioned, and it also provides a complete backup and restore. Um, so as can be seen from the comparison table, Active Backup for Business has no pricing and does not limit the number of devices or users and supports a complete range of data sources. Uh, and compared with other sort of vendors on this card, the data recovery function has the function of instant recovery to the backup server and supports the recovery portal, which is convenient for enterprises to assign permissions to sort of employees uh, for self-service recovery to sort of take some strain off of them. So the IT admin sort of has more time and can work on more important areas. Um, so with Microsoft, I'm sure you have hopefully read their, their service contract. Um, it says that enterprises can't store data by using third-party applications such as cloud services uh, like Microsoft 365. So Microsoft will not be responsible for any data loss and in event of a failure, there may be no way to retrieve data stored in Microsoft services. So our solution for you here would be C2 Backup for Business uh, without the need for hardware and no device limits. CT backup business can help enterprises protect on-prem and cloud workloads from a centralized and secure cloud platform. So you can see here on the right that no hardware supports your PC, server, and cloud, limited number of devices, centralized intuitive console, and a web-based recovery portal similar to active backup for business. Uh, we'll look at the pricing here as well for the plans of CT backup for business and other sort of similar cloud back backup services. Not only is C2 backup priced sort of quite effectively, the pricing model is also relatively simple. Uh, other brands have different pricing methods depending on the capacity, solution, number of devices or accounts, which means that if enterprises scale is large, the cost will also be large, um, whereas C2 backup allows you to not worry about the huge cost of this part because it's only priced on the storage space that you need. And the last thing I want to cover off is C2 object storage. So with that explosive data growth, uh, object storage has gradually become the standard for large capacity storage uh, and it's effective solution to store in large scale and unstructured data as it has unlimited expansion capabilities so sort of there is an infinite scalability to it um, and the key is that data is stored in objects rather than files um, in this stored in repositories rather than folders the the complicated tree structure or partitions that you get with other file solutions makes this one nice and easy. So you can easily search for a file and they're kind of all stored on sort of a level plane rather than being within a tree structure. And of course, we'll cover off the pricing for this as well. So C2 object storage comes in at quite a low cost. Uh, Amazon S3 for the storage fee of one terabyte a year, maybe a little bit more. Azure is sort of in the middle and sort of Google sort of follows similar to the Amazon S3 area. The difference being, the data retrieval fee for 12 terabytes a year from Amazon is largely sort of across the scale. Azure, somewhat similar. And then Google, again, somewhat similar. Whereas with C2 object storage, your data retrieval fee past the sort of terabytes that you have per month is, is there isn't any. So therefore it's a much more cost-effective solution. So you're paying zero euros for data deletion, zero for data upload, and you're paying one cent per gigabyte for additional downloads on top of what's already there. So we're gonna move on to data protection. Uh, so we've just covered off regulations and compliance and what tools there are to sort of help you comply with them. Now we're gonna look at data protection and how we can sort of implement systems to sort of help you with this. So if we look at a sort of traditional enterprise environment, we know that in addition to common computers, laptops, uh, sorry, computers and laptops. Uh, enterprises may also use virtual machines, physical servers, file servers, and cloud services. So using brand A backup software, you can do your VM. Uh, so VMware Hyper-V, they can cover that. Brand B is better. It can do VMware, 
uh, Hyper-V, your physical servers and your PC and laptops. Brand C, uh, you can do your PC and laptops and your cloud applications. Uh, and custom script could maybe do your physical servers, but no single platform can cover all. So if we look at Polaris Group as an example, they're a multinational biotechnology company focused on developing novel anti-cancer therapies and are involved in every stage of the drug development process. So since their original backup storage equipment was too old and could not meet the needs of offsite backup required by the audit department, they began to look for a new backup solution. So they needed to back up local computers, VMs, physical servers, so much more. Uh, but because regulations require that cloud data backups cannot be stored in the same destination as local data, it's also necessary to find another backup destination for their 365 data. Um, so they have backup sort of user devices, VMs, and physical servers across Chengdu and California, uh, as well as Taipei. So they chose to use Active Backup for Business for their VM backups. So this is their cross-site endpoint and VM backups, and then utilized uh, C2 backup to backup 200 plus exchange mailboxes. Um, so it's a fully automated backup task and then produce the workload for their IT department. So as seen with Polaris, they uh, they use hybrid cloud backup solution provided by Sonology uh, that can solve these challenges all at once. You have active backup for business that runs on a Sonology NAS, uh, can support backup for various device types, as you can see on screen. Um, and then Windows, so that being Windows and Mac, computers used uh, by enterprises, Windows servers, Linux, and other servers, as well as VMware, vSphere, and Microsoft Hyper-V virtual machines can all easily be backed up through a single platform. Um, and then on addition to this, the C2 backup for business can cover off their cloud, uh, PC laptops, and a Windows server. Um, so for cloud services, Microsoft 365 Exchange, OneDrive, and SharePoint data, uh, which is quite commonly used by enterprises, can also be backed up this way. Uh, this allows enterprises to implement the 3 to one principle of backup and better protect their data. So generally when the IT department in an enterprise sort of assists in setting up backups for internal devices, it's likely to target different types of devices, such as personal computers uh, for work, virtual machines for development, and file servers. So creating that backup task, the IT admin creates one for the user PC, creates one for the virtual machine, creates one for the file server, but there's another PC, and then there's another virtual machine, and there's another file server, so they're creating backup tasks for each one individually, and so on, and they keep doing this, and it takes a lot of time. With both Active Backup for Business and C2 Backup for Business, uh, they provide the backup policy function, um, which allows you to apply respective backup policies to specified devices. So, Backup policy can specify details such as device, scope, uh, and frequency to apply to the backup task, and multiple sets of backup policies can be established as needed. So our IT admin here has his backup template. Um, he has one for each type of device that he needs to backup, and he can just apply that backup template to user PCs, all virtual machines, and all file servers, so making it nice and easy. Uh, the backup settings included in the backup principle can also achieve automatic backup, which can trigger backup according to time or events, avoid working hours, and specify the time period for performing backups, um, further avoiding sort of affecting personal work or service interruption. And you can see that it's very similar within C2 as well. And then sort of with mass deployment, uh, usually the enterprise uses a directory server to manage devices. So you can do the same. Um, IT personnel can use directory servers to easily deploy agents to a large number of devices. For example, Windows AD, which is commonly used by enterprises, has group policy object and GPO functions, which allow IT personnel to perform a large number of deployments. So you can see here that we send out the policy to Active Directory, and then it can sort of install the active backup business or C2 backup business agent onto those BCs. So where does C2 fit in? 
so in sorry, C2 object storage fits in, in terms of data protection, um, building a data lake allows organizations to house all structured and unstructured data at any scale without first establishing a data structure and enables organizations to perform a variety of different types of data analytics. Enterprises can organize data according to the frequency of data access and then the time it will be retained. So you can do this through a, an archive. And then, of course, you can use it as a backup and restore destination to protect important digital assets of the enterprises to, to prevent cyber attacks such as ransomware. Um, so C2 object storage is not only a two-in-one sort of multifunctional backup destination, it can also become the secondary backup of a NAS. So regardless of whether the enterprise uses NAS or not, it can fully back up various types of development and production environments, becoming a multifunctional cloud backup storage service. Uh, coupled with the C3, sorry, S3 compatibility of C2 object storage, enterprises can also use C2 object storage to build a data lake for a large amount of unstructured data, as you can see on screen. So I want to talk about Baja Aqua Farms. Um, it's uh, their leader in high quality tuna farming uh, located in Baja, California, Mexico. The company's sort of 1,210 hectares of tuna farming centers uh, along the coast of the Pacific. Um, they do a lot of bluefin in tuna farming there, uh, sort of all year round. Um, they have their NAS and they have a snapshot replication on that. And so they take snapshots uh, they snapshot these into a shared folder, which they then use Cloud Sync to sync to object storage so that they have then a, a snapshot that they can restore. Um, so that's keeping their sort of 25 terabytes of snapshots stored in the shared folder on the storage NAS server, which then is later synced to C2 object storage. And then using C2 backup, they back up about five terabytes of Office 365 accounts and endpoint data um, within their organization. So C2 object storage provides the same level of data durability as AWS and the service availability as high as 99.99%. So it's ensuring that all the, the safety of all operations. The data centers uh, of Synology C2 have obtained information security certificates such as ISO 27001 and SOC 2 type 2, um, as well as um, sort of being uh, located in uh, the United States, Germany, and Taiwan. So data will only be stored in the data center in the region that you choose. And with C2 object storage, you also have versioning. So, you know, it can create different versions of the file so that you can obviously restore from a previous version, enhancing data protection and recovery of your sort of data. And then you'll have object locked, uh, object lock. So you can lock sort of versions from deletions or modifications to confidently retain historical records, mutably ensuring business compliance with data privacy regulations. So immutability and compliance, sort of following on from our, our first section. So we covered off our sort of data protection and sort of how you can implement solutions to sort of protect yourself. We're now going to go on to disaster recovery. So if the worst thing does happen, how we can sort of cover ourselves off from there. So a well-known antivirus software, Kaspersky, recently announced a new type of ransomware called Luna, which can lock Windows, Linux, and even VMware XC operating systems at the same time, confirming the trend of cross-platform ransomware. Therefore, if an enterprise wants to protect all working environments uh, multiple times at once, it becomes the top priority of data protection. So uh, if we look at the ways that Active Backup for Business can help when something goes wrong and how we can recover, the first thing we'll look at out of the three options here is the self-service recovery portal. So you can see here on screen, we have our self-service recovery portal. IT admins can allow sort of users uh, permissions to their own files so that self-service restoration can be done, um, meaning that uh, sort of any given period of time, um, it, the user can restore these files, saving admins sort of a lot of time. The second part being a bare metal restore. So that's allowing us to restore an entire device 
and we'll have a little look at the process on the next slide. So for a bare metal restore, uh, we have our hypervisor. So in this case, VMware vSphere XE. Um, we're going to have our five VMs running on that. We're obviously going to back up our VMware clients, so our virtual machine, using active back of the business. Uh, say VM5 goes down. So we then restore from our NAS that VM back up to our VMware vSphere hypervisor, and it obviously then gets it back up and running. So it's a nice, easy sort of bare metal restore, getting that virtual machine back up and running. So, and our third and final option being the instant restore. This is probably one of my favorite features of Active Backup for Business. Uh, so recovery to virtual machine manager. So again, we have a hypervisor with our VMs and our Synology NAS. Again, being backed up via Active Backup for Business. The hypervisor goes down, meaning we lose all of our VMs but we have our backup onto our Synology NAS. So we can get our most sort of important virtual machine, maybe a couple of them up and running within Synology's virtual machine manager. So you can restore to virtual machine manager, have your most important sort of virtual machines back up and running um, in the sort of meantime that it takes you to get your hypervisor back up. And once you get your hypervisor back up, we can then restore the VMs back to the hypervisor and have everything running as normal. So we covered off sort of active backup business and how you can restore through there. We're now going to look at our remote restoration through C2 backup for business. And we'll start again with our self-service recovery portal. So very similar to how active backup for business works. That allows users to sort of finally restore emails and exchange online mailboxes, individual files on OneDrive, SharePoint files, and so on. Um, with self-service rest restoration, enterprises no longer have to worry about data loss and it can obtain backups with peace of mind in the face of information security risks, such as ransomware. So we're covered off with T2 backup, making sure that there's easy restoration there if anything does go wrong. And then we're gonna cover off uh, a C2 backup for business bare metal restore. That's a little bit different to active backup for business, business, but we'll cover that off now. So we have our endpoint device. We'll install our C2 backup agent on that. And then, of course, we will back up our C2 device to C2 backup, which is then held in our C2 data center. We then need to create a backup ISO media on USB. So we'll do that. Um, say the laptop goes down, something's wrong. We need to sort of build the laptop from the start. Or well, we can insert our USB and boot into the BIOS, selecting USB as the boot media. We'll then run through our backup wizard and then we can restore uh, our windows uh, sorry restore uh, you pick this selected restore uh, version that you'd like to sort of restore to the laptop restart device and then we'll be booting into windows so there's three key things i want you to remember from this webinar the first being an all-in-one data protection solution so utilizing active backup for business and c2 backup for business will allow you to sort of cover all platforms and of course, you've also got object storage if you want sort of a backup, to a third or secondary backup destination. You have C2 backup for business, which is infinitely scalable, allows you to scale your backup along with the size of your business. And finally, the instant restore function, which, as I said, is one of my favorite features of active backup for business. So it's an easy and simple rest restoration for both IT admins uh, and end users taking the pressure off the IT team. So. You've got both restoration to the self-service portal and the sort of virtual machine manager restoration if anything goes wrong.